Hey, what's up guys? Come back with another World of Tanks review. Now this review is going to be on the Tier 6 Japanese medium tank, the Type 4 Chito. Now the Chito is pretty much, you know, coming from the Tier 5, the Chi Nu, um, just an upgraded version of the Chi Nu. Um, I mean, you can even look here as it has a similar, you know, layout in terms of modules and actual uh, armor for say, and, uh, you know, the, just the look of the turret, the cannon, all that good stuff. So, uh, coming from the Tier 5, it pretty much follows, like I said, the same playstyle, um, more of a flex sniper tank uh, with, you know, that 75mm cannon that is pretty much going to be the same thing with a little bit more pen and damage. So, without further ado, let's get on with this review, guys. Okay, first things first, we're going to go to the tech tree and check out the differences between its Tier 5 predecessor and itself. So, I did max out the Chinu, uh, got a great, you know... Uh, play out of that thing. The tier 5 Chinu was a great tank in my opinion. I loved its DPM. I loved its uh, penetration as well as gun depression, uh, abusing hills and, you know, uh, downward cliffs, stuff like that. So if we look at the Chinu, um, it had a 75mm Type Gun 5, which had 124mm of penetration, um, whereas the uh, Chito, this tier 6, is going to have a bit more at 155mm of penetration with standard AP rounds. Now its gun on the Chito follows the same setup as the, you know, Chi News gun where its, uh, its gold round is actually another set of armor piercing. It's not APCR, it's not heat, it's actually armor piercing. So it follows the same mechanics, uh, just a little bit higher base penetration at 186 now if we look towards accuracy and aim time, it gets a little bit of a buff, uh, 0.2 aim seconds off, you know, the reticle, which is pretty good at 2.1. It has uh, 0 0.01 uh, accuracy better than the uh, Chi News gun as the Type 5. And it has 5 more alpha at 130 as a 5. So uh, one of the things about, you know, that I really want to mention on this Cheeto is that it has a great HP pool, and you're going to be finding that from now tier 6 on to probably tier 8 and so on. Uh, whereas, this thing has 820 hit points as a tier 6 medium, where if you go to the KV-1S, which is a Soviet tank, which is known to be one of the best brawlers and one of the best, uh, you know, alpha kings of the tier, has 760 stock hit points and I believe 810 with the upgraded turret. So this thing has more than the KV-1S uh, HP, which is a heavy at the same tier. So you're going to be getting that heavy HP pool, you know, then again, uh, T-150 having 830 as opposed to this thing's 820. So you have about the same hit points as a same tier heavy. So, um, one thing that I really want to point out with that is, due to your low alpha at the tier at 130, you don't want to be trading shots with those heavy type tanks, um, even though you have the HP. The thing is, you have no armor, so you may be trading shots and you're going to bounce them while they're not going to bounce you. So, just some things to keep in mind in terms of this gun, and uh, next we'll go over, you know, just basic stats, mobility, which is pretty much all the same as the Chinu, and uh, how it's will play out with the speed limit and everything like that. All right, so easily enough, this Cheeto has, uh, on the left here, its engine, has 100 horsepower more than this Chinu. Now, the Chinu had, uh, right here, 300 horsepower to its, uh, I'll just round it up, 20 tons. Now, if we go to the Cheeto, it probably weighs a little bit more. Yeah, 32 tons for its 400 horsepower engine. So it's pretty much equivalent to the same HP per ton, uh, you know, uh, ratio. Whereas you're going to have a pretty good pick up and go. Um, not the best. Uh, reverse speed is pretty good. I think at like 20, 22 kilometers an hour, something like that. And it's forward... Uh, kilometer an hour speed limit is 45. So um, due to your sniping uh, play style and flex tank uh, support role, you're not going to be obviously getting right up to the front lines and doing most of the scouting. You're actually going to be one of those mediums that sits back a little bit more, uh, kind of like a Panther play style or Panther 2. Uh, so along with that, you know, the engine mobility, like I said, is overall okay. Its terrain passability is actually better than its predecessor, the Chi Nu. So the Cheeto has a little bit better terrain passability. Now, uh, actual, um, you know, mobility you'll see in the game, but uh, for my, for my uh, opinion, it's, it's pretty good for its playstyle. So other stats, you know, like I said, I mentioned the huge HP pool, horsepower, all that good stuff. Its traverse speed is 30 degrees per second, which is a little bit lacking, but for such a big boxy tank, that's okay. Church traverse is 36, which then again is the same uh, 
pretty much as all other mediums in the branch, uh, which isn't necessarily good compared to other countries, but then again, you do have that huge hit point pool, like I said. Uh, view range is uh, 360 and 400 signal range. Now that's a little bit weird because I don't think I have, yeah, I don't have the upgraded uh, radio, which I actually should probably put on right now. So uh, here we go with the second to last one, the tier 8 one. It is 550 meters uh, and 60 uh, view range. So that's pretty good for spotting. Um, there is a tier 9 radio, which I will research before I get to the other part of this video, which is uh, 750 meters, which is the tier 10 radio. So uh, on to the loadouts, you know, play style, other armor uh, schemes, and uh, module placement. Alright, so looking here at the side of the tank, uh, one thing that I find um, about these Japanese tanks that is really weird is that uh, it has almost... Uh, I don't want to say an overhang of armor, but at the same time, it does count as a hitbox. These little lights on the back, or I don't know whether those lights or fuel tanks, whatever the hell those are, um, these little exhaust things right here, these drums. Uh, if you look here, when you're shooting through it, you would think that all this mud flap here uh, would pretty much just count as a no-hit zone, because there is the middle of the track. If you hit these mud flaps in the back, or this right here, it is a hitbox. So even though it kind of hangs out from the tank right here and right there, that all counts as a hitbox. Sort of, kind of like the the tier eight uh, German TD, the Roomba, which uh, I can show you guys right now, uh, right here. So it's kind of if you guys are familiar with that, um, there are some weird hitboxes on this tank as well, as far as the armor scheme goes. So then again, turret armor is 75 millimeters in the front, uh, being the gun mantlet and these little sheet of cheeks here. However, these, uh, just like the Tiger type tanks, these weird side panels actually count as the side armor, which is 35 millimeters, along with the back of the turret. So, you know, this thing, once again, is a Japanese tank, not going to have much armor whatsoever, but you do have that insane gun depression, which you can use to your advantage to show the least amount of your tank. So, whole armor, uh, the only good sloping that you really see is right here, and, uh, that's the upper plate. Um, it has a huge lower and middle glacis, uh, as long as, uh, you know, you're angled, you're not even going to bounce be bouncing anything because it is so flat. Along with these other side, I guess, shoulder armor plates and side and back are around 50 uh, to 35 uh, millimeters of armor. Now, I think I messed up when I said the turret armor at 35, it actually reads 50, but um, it doesn't make much of a difference. It's actually terrible. Uh, as weak spots go, other than the whole tank itself, you know, you have the driver's port here, uh, radio man, gunner. Um, you have uh, the commander's cupola, which pretty much if you shoot anywhere in the turret, it's going to hopefully crit the commander. Um, other than that, there's not much to go over other than loadouts, which I'll do right now. Um, following the same thing as the tier 5, uh, it does hold a lot more shells, which is a plus uh, with the suspension. So 50 AP uh, standard shells. I go 5 AP uh, gold shells and then 10 HG. And the uh, consumables, small repair kit, small first aid kit, automatic fire extinguisher, which is always worth it. And uh, the equipment, I have a medium caliber gun rammer a coated optic set, and I believe that, um, yeah, these tier 6 through 7s, uh, the 7 might be able to mount it. They cannot mount vertical stabilizers, so that's what I'm going to mount once I can. Um, for now, I might buy an enhanced gun laying drive or maybe demount it from another tank, uh, but in my opinion, at tier 6 without 6 cents, it's not really worth it at this point uh, to buy um, such an expensive module if I'm only going to use it for this tank. So uh, the ideal setup would be yeah, gun rammer, coated optics, uh, or vents, in your opinion, whatever you want to do, and a gun laying drive or uh, vert stab, uh, depending whether you want to use the gun laying drive when you can't use the vert stab, but I prefer the vert stab. So crew skills, same as the other tank, which I actually have not really uh, gotten by, because I, I completely... Uh, played out the Chinu, but I got most of the crew skill up, but I haven't gotten another crew for there, so like I said, it's going to be the same thing. So that means Commander is obviously six cents. I chose to go six cents right away because I really don't care about repairs. You know, 64% repair is not going to do much. Uh, so I'm just going to go six cents, get that up there. Uh, once it's 100%, then I'll definitely get uh, camo and repairs depending on how I want to play this tank. The loader, um, you want to get, obviously, safe stowage is a must on these no-armored tanks. And then repairs, camouflage. On the uh, radio operator, you can really do whatever you want. You can do view range skills, repairs, camo, that's what I did. 
uh, there's going to be repairs and camo, and obviously on the move shooting for the driver and gunner being snapshot and smooth ride as your first uh, maneuverability skills while shooting while maneuvering. And then you can do pretty much whatever you want on the driver. Driver has the best skills in my opinion. You could use clutch braking, off road driving, uh, you know, repairs, camouflage. Probably going to go with clutch braking and then uh, repairs um, once I finish that. And then camouflage is my fourth. And now for gunner. You know, like I said, snapshot, you can get repairs, uh, camo, pretty much always everything uh, can use repairs and camo. And maybe designate target if you're going to be spotting in this tank. Uh, obviously at tier 10 you will, because STB has great view range. But for these lower tiers, I just suggest going repairs and camo uh, for the time being. So that's all I can really talk about in this Cheeto. Um, you know, let's get some gameplay going. I'll probably go into game first, just to show you guys how it'll act without you know, sufficient skills, uh, pretty much while you're grinding. So yeah, let's get that started. Alright, so we are going to go into game. Hopefully get a good matchup of top tier, you know, can't promise anything with Matchmaker. Which, what do you know, get a massive tier 8 game. So we're going to be supporting, hopefully doing okay amounts of damage. Uh, it's on steps, so we've got a lot of room to wiggle with. We've got a good chaffee according to XVM, which will hopefully light some crap up for us so that we can shoot, but you never know. Ooh, little A44. Don't see those every day. I, I really enjoyed that tank. A lot of people hate it, but we'll see. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go support the eastern flank. Uh, you know, stay back, shoot idiots as they try and YOLO into the ditch, but um, no promises at a really good game here because... It is a low tier game, and I'm just going to have to support. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn on some volume, because I think that would help a little bit. There we go. So, like I said, this thing's pick up and go is okay. It's not the best, but uh, we are on some really tough terrain right now, and... Um, one thing to mention about this Cheeto is it only gets one uh, engine, I believe, so you don't really have to upgrade that way. So there's an IS out of my view range, which I'm not going to go up to shoot, but this Chaffee is doing a pretty good job, apparently, of lighting one tank, but I think he got lit too, so we'll see what happens. Try and get to this rock, see if I could spot that IS, however he is bugging out. Here's a Pershing. So we're pretty much just playing the waiting game. Not really many people are spotted at all, so we'll see what we can do. Hopefully this Chaffee comes into my view range and I can shoot him. Which apparently is already dead, so rip. Yeah, T28 in middle, that's weird. Don't see that every day. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move up a little bit down this line, not too much. I'm going to use the hills here as my cover. Stay out of the enemy's view range. Pershing looks to be YOLOing at our KV-1S, so I'm going to go help support him. However, this IS is coming out here. Got one shot at him. Uh, he was aiming at me, so I just decided to run back. Use our gun depression. Oop, there's an RL-44 I can shoot at. Hopefully. Eh, yeah, not really. Those guys should be able to deal with that Pershing. Um, he is full health, but uh, if they're smart, they'll let him come to him. 
But this cable in S is an idiot, so it's not gonna happen. Let's see if we can get lights on this IS. What was that KV1S thinking? Nice A44 is going in, I gotta help him. Keep eyes for the IS, there he is. Gotta help this uh, A44 now. Brawl it out with this Pershing. His ass is gonna be to me, so this will help. Got him, here's a Jagdpanzer 4 that we can toy with. Oh, he got my track. I'm just gonna out DPM him. This is where you can use that retarded HP pool. So, I mean, like I said, this thing's HP pool is uh, really good, so you could obviously not repair, a, uh, not repair there and uh, burn a repair kit and pretty much out DPM uh, lower tier targets, which that was the same tier target, but it's a Jagdpanzer IV, it's a complete pile of shit. So by the looks of this, our west side cleaned up pretty nicely, we were able to get two kills there. Uh, couldn't save that A44, but we were able to, you know, clean up that Pershing, which was really the only threat on that eastern flank. So as Chaffee's doing a good job keeping this IS lit and running away from him. And they're going to clean up that Tiger too. So, here we go. I'm going to take shots at this IS. Aim in pretty quickly. And RNG's a scrub. And there's one shot. Try and put another one in. Don't know where that went. Bounced. And he's out of our V-range. Take a few on the move shots for fun. Hopefully he'll get relit soon. I'm gonna load some gold just so I can get maximum damage. There he is, he's coming out. And I missed, great. Oh well, alright, uh, looks like I did hit a few, wow, two blind shots on that IS, okay, while I was shooting there. So that was okay, uh, 1,203 damage, um, you know, not much of an action-packed game, but it is what it is. Shows that great HP pool and the, uh, you know, okay maneuverability of this tank. So we were able to get third best H uh, XP along with uh, sufficient damage, you know, that's probably okay at the 1-8 level. Yeah, that's alright, 1,300. Um... You know, it's win 8 threshold isn't that bad. Uh, it's usually around 1,200 damage is considered uh, blue. So, um, this was, I think I actually had a few games before this. That's why it's low. Yeah, okay. So, um, that's the detailed report here. We'll have one more game, probably a replay. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Alright, so um, I actually just hopped into game for the second gameplay, you know, just to see what I can get um, in terms of matchmaking. And look at this, we got a pretty well set up matchmaker game uh, of, per, according to XVM, you know, a pretty even game at 50% per chance on each side. So I decided to just open up OBS and stream this for you guys. Um, also, uh, you know, on the, on the fly, trying to get the gameplay as accurately as I can, as there's a little jumble up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, use this as the second gameplay. We'll see how it goes. And hopefully due to this matchmaker, it'll actually be pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the middle of the map. Uh, hopefully this ELC will go down in the fishbowl, which it does not look like he's doing. And we're going to snipe across, use our coded optics, and uh, gun depression to our advantage. Now I would prefer to be on the other side of the map for sniping here, but it is what it is, and we'll see what we can spot. Oh, looks like there's a friendly ELC that wants to play with us. Oh, so cute. So that enemy ELC just uh, booked out of there, and I'm definitely spotted, obviously, as there's an enemy Cheeto who I can shoot. Put one shot into him, see if we can get another one. There we go, there's two shots. Use this retarded DPM to our advantage, and I think I might have tracked him. Nope, he's running away. And there's one kill. 
So there's an E2 on the bridge and two guys who just crossed T49 down below. I'm going to go ahead and get into this little dip. And there's the already has been spotted. Let's see if we can spot this T49. As we are very slow on this terrain. So we're going to have to get up some damage over here. Lots of tanks that we can toy with. We've got a Jackson supporting us from mid and this Churchill and uh, looks to be an Arl coming around to help us. Now if that T14 goes up there we're gonna have to use our HP pool and uh, out DPM him but we will see where everyone is. Oop, at 2 is using the howitzer. That's some retarded stuff right there. So I'm going to switch to gold just so I can get through him reliably. And T14 completely is YOLOing into our forces, so I don't even have to worry about him. I think Artie just hit the AT2. We'll spot him here shortly. Get a bounce on his uh, superstructure. Now we're going to get a little bit to the right, make him traverse a little bit. Throw off his shot while this Jackson put some shells into him, and Artie just bounced him. That was pretty funny. Oh, there's a Churchill Mark 1 up on the hill that we can shoot. Toy with him a little bit. Now, he does not have the best accuracy, so it looks like he's pulling out. I'm gonna jump one more shot into him. Pull back. There's the miss. Let's see if I could spot him again. However, by the looks of it, I think he pulled out. Now, I'm, old, out, bleh, I'm out of gold rounds, so... Um, I'm not going to be auto penning this AT2 that's eventually going to get antsy and YOLO charge me. So there's that church. Let's put a shot into him. He's not even looking. Shoot him in the turret. There we go. Get one in the hole. Or turret ring. RNG's helping me out today. Got one bounce. Alright, we gotta beware of Artie, because he is in that little ditch over there. He may have shots at me. AT2 looks to be in the corner. I try and shoot him. However, the Artie is occupied down there, and there's a miss by the AT2 with this hole down position. And into his cupola he goes. Now, the SU100Y has yet to be spotted, so I'm kind of a. Uh, Scared of him, and we're gonna out TP on this. Oh, or bounce the church. There's that. I'm gonna reroute uh, towards the west and help out our friends, because uh, by the looks of it, they can't kill an average KV1 player, which is kind of sad. Um, but we'll see how it goes. This Jackson hopefully will finally take him out, but may need some help on my flank. Or by my flank, rather. Alright, he got them. Uh, they're going to our base, so what I'm going to do is reroute through the middle. I'm not going to deal with that Su-100Y. The Su-100Y is definitely at their base, that's no doubt about that. Um, we have three friendlies going towards their base, so that'll, that'll definitely overwhelm that Su, so that's fine. So like I said, this thing's gun depression really helps it out. Its HP pool is definitely a plus. Its DPM is way up there. You know, with a three second reload, that's always fun. Right, so I'm going to go directly back to base. I'm not going to go through the long way. Because by the looks of it, the M6 either went back to base or is uh, behind that 1S. Up oh, they're over there. This Type T34 should should be able to hold his own for a little bit if the already decides the TD mode. However, he just got penned and it does not look good. Alright, I'm going to have to hold down the fort while these guys... Uh, Jackson might come back? No, I think they're going to cap. Alright, so uh, the already's keeping them spotted, so this will be easy to shoot them as the already just killed them 6 And they're going to go cap. We got this. SU-100Y is camping the base. He may actually be AFK, because he's not even traversing or moving, so we'll see what happens. I can take a shot here. There we go. Alright, I got this guy. Or not. 
Come on, Artie, get him. There we go. Alright, so there's the uh, win. Uh, pretty nice ending there, as our, looks to be, was that an Arl was able to kill that uh, SU-100Y? Um, meh, let's see who killed him. That was impressive, I think, yeah, I think the SU was actually AFK, so actually nothing really um, special there. So, um, there you have it, a uh, really nice game in this Cheeto, you know, just overall good flex tank. You guys saw me travel so much in that tank there, um, 2.1 kilometers. So here's the after battle reports. I'll show you guys right here. Damaged a lot on that one S. Fuel tank track, track, driver, Cheeto, engine track, track and gunner, that would explain why he was missing, and gun on the AT2, again, why he was missing. So overall, really good game. That'll add to the win 8 as, yeah, look at that, 4,100 win 8 on that game there. Uh, for doing 1.7k damage and almost 250, uh, you know, spotting damage. Uh, top of the team in terms of damage and XP. Uh, I believe we got high caliber and four kills. So that's the second gameplay. Next we'll have the closing and, um, you know, look forward to the next tank, which is the chi -ri, And we'll uh, get into that shortly. Alright, so to close off this review on the Type 4 Cheeto, Japanese Tier 6 Medium, um, I just want to say it's, in my opinion, it's pretty much the same thing as the Chinu, um, not much of a difference. It's okay, I mean, the one probably best thing about this tank is its HP pool and the fact that you actually can take a few hits and still stay alive. Um, you know, mixed with its no armor and stuff like that, um, the hit point pool really helps. But along with that, its guns obviously mediocre. It's a mediocre tank overall, but um, if you play it well, it, it's doable. Um, it's definitely good for win eight if you guys are looking for padding, if you will. Um, but you know, it's an okay tank. Uh, we'll hopefully get to this uh, uh, next tank. The uh, I believe it's called the uh, I don't even know what it's called. The Chi Ri, which has a three shot auto loader, which is um, going to be pretty fun to look at. Um, we'll hopefully have that in, uh, maybe in the coming week. Um, I'm going to obviously have to grind out this tank a little bit more because I don't have that much XP on it uh, and make a video, get some gameplay. So be looking for that in the next week. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, guys. Really hope this review helps, and uh, happy tanking.